What's happening, T subs and T squads? So, y'all already know why I'm here. I'm here to give y'all the Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season five, episode 17. 50, uh, 50 Shades of Betrayals. So, girl, we ain't about to belabor the time. Let's get this popping. Okay. So, the episode continues off with Ashley, Robin, and Giselle sitting poolside. And. Ashley says that she plans on telling um, Candace about her character statement um, on the next night at a little BDSM party that her and um, Giselle is throwing. And Giselle keeps throwing around this, oh, your relationship with Candace, your relationship with Candace, bitch, it ain't no relationship with Candace. Ashley don't like Candace. Candace don't like Ashley. Monique and Ashley are real friends. Ashley and Candace is not. So I'm not mad at Ashley for basically telling her truth about how Candace is just as unpredictable and dangerous and threatening as she's sitting up here saying that this woman is. Like, Giselle, bitch, go kick rocks. Like, Giselle and, and, and Robin kill me. Because they really sitting up here acting as if they're real friends with Candace, and they're not. They're not. And I, I, I don't give a flying hell what nobody feel about that. I refuse to believe that they're riding this hard for Candace on a genuine level. It's not because Giselle wants to ice Monique out. And y'all already know that Giselle and Robin are secret scissor sisters of the scissor, uh, scissor sister society. And she's just going to blow along with the wind right on along with thick weave. And I'm going to get that black bitch together um, when we get down to when we get down to that. Moving on. The ladies go swimming. Fine. Um... Candace lets the lady say her new song, whatever. Giselle asks Candace how she felt about what happened the night before. And she also asks her, were her and Karen good? Candace says that she's looking at her differently. And Giselle says, as you should. And Giselle, use a raggedy bitch. And there is nothing that you could ever do to make me like you and your fake ass character. Because it, it it just bugs me at how can't nobody have a mind of their own around you. It's either your way or the highway. What you feel is what you think everybody else is supposed to feel. And I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't get down like that. Karen is the oldest one out of all of y'all there. She is allowed to have her own mind and her own right to decide what it is that she wants to do. And who it is that she wants to be friends with. And who it is that she wants to communicate with like it just like everything that Giselle does is messy from her makeup to her dry frizzy ass weave to the fucked up outfits that she wears to her personality to her conversation everything is just messy it's just one big mess fest when it comes to Giselle and she uh, it, moving on Okay, so Candace tells Giselle that she doesn't feel the full weight of Karen's support and she's been the closest to Karen in the group. Um, Candace, you are an immature little bitch. And that's exactly why God ain't blessing you with no kids. He don't want to get... And, and the, 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 the gag is, you got teenagers running around here having quiz, quick kids quicker than your ass is. Like, it's just bothering me that... Her whole thing is, oh no, she doesn't want her to still be That's That's the thing. And I really wish Candace would just say that. If you my friend, I don't want you to be friends with Monique. And if you continue to be friends with Monique, I can't be friends with you. And how dull and stupid and childish and immature that that is. I would appreciate her better if she just says that. I would. Drop down in the comments if y'all feel the same way that I feel about that. Moving on. Karen calls Ray Child and then she starts talking about how, you know, um, she wants to get back to the intimacy with Ray. And she lets him know about the dominatrix party that they're going to be having tomorrow. And, you know, Ray in the camera looking like a deer caught in headlights. And Karen, I, listen, it's going to take me more than a Michelob and a pack of Newports to get that 
thought out my head about you sleeping with Uncle Ben's. Like I and as much as I love the both of y'all, Karen, stop doing that to us, please. You and him ain't had sex since nineteen seventy two. Girl, stop playing with us. Moving on. Um Giselle says that Karen's ulcer is a lie because she started drinking champagne again. Giselle, shut your ass up. Your whole life and existence on this show has been a lie. Your relationship is a lie. You and Jamal is a lie. Everything about you is a lie. So one lie deserves another. So who gives a shit? All of y'all hoes is lying and faking a funk if you let me tell it. So it is what it is. Moving on. Robin says that she sent Juan nigga pictures since she's been there. And Candace sends uh, Lil Chris tit pits down at the table. I mean, I guess so, Candace. Do whatever you got to do, child. Um, You still ain't going to get no baby up out the deal. But if that make you feel better to be amongst all them good white people in a foreign country, at sitting at the table taking tit pictures and sending them to your man girl it is what it is a robin you sent one naked pictures with your butch dyke ass anyway all right you guys so um so they get back into the episode and then we see candace with them tied late ass sticky notes Moving on. So then Robin tells the ladies that her website is up. And Robin tells Karen that her pictures didn't turn out great, so she didn't use it. And like I said earlier, Karen paid this. She really didn't give a damn about not being um, photographed in them tied, late-ass uh, gas station, Dollar Tree, gift shop, down to the rest stop as hats. And I'm glad she didn't. Moving on. Giselle talks to Karen and Ashley about her relationship with Juan and how happy she is. Moving on. Karen tells the ladies that she's having a wig. She's launching a wig line. Lord Jesus. Karen, can you please just stick to LaDon? I, 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 you know, I, I just honestly, and I love you, Karen. I honestly don't see nobody, you know, pushing a shove into stand in line to wear your damn wigs i'm just gonna be real and she's inviting the ladies to a launch party and then great dane er um scooby-doo er robin's wife er i mean juan's wife er juan's girlfriend er the bitch that juan fucking er robin asks her uh straight out the gate is monique coming and we're about to find out her answer. But you know what? Even before we get to that, my whole thing is why the fuck does it matter if if, if Monique is... Like, listen, y'all, look, okay, enough is enough of this shit. Like, and, and, and I'm just going to be real. Enough is enough of this shit. The only person who should have any type of issue with her being there is the bitch who got her damn wig snatched. And that's Candace. All the rest of you tired, late, bummy assholes should not give two dams of whether she is going to be there or not. Like, I'm, I'm, listen, this is really pissing me off. Because, like, the trip was late and dull and boring because she wasn't there. But she may as well had have been there because she stayed being the topic of conversation. Now, here it is again. Robin and Giselle is trying to dictate who needs to be at somebody else's launch or not. I really hope Karen says that she's going to extend the invitation. I really hope she does. And if them, and if them bummy, crusty assholes decide that they don't want to come, fuck them. And that's how I feel about it. Moving on. All right, you guys. So, um, so getting back to Great Dane asking her, was Monique going to be there? And she says, no, because it's not a good thing for them to be around each other right now. Karen, I'm sad I am the fuck out of you. And I'm just going to be honest. If you're going to be neutral, be neutral. Now, I've been riding for you all damn season. I've been taking up for you when it comes to El Teddy dragging your name down through the goddamn mud. And I, listen, I'm sorry, Karen. 
If Monique is your friend the way you say Monique is your friend, you will make you will move heaven and hell to make sure that your friend is at your launch party. And for the rest of them tired, tacky ticks, them damn tit mouses that don't want to be there, then that's just completely on them. There is no listen, let me let let me explain something to y'all. There's no way in hell that I could have a launch party of any kind and not invite my best friends. There's no way that I could have a launch party and not invite my little brother, Scotty. There's no way I will have a launch party and not invite any of my brothers and sisters on the Just Us League. If they got into it with somebody that I'm friends with, listen, be an adult. They're not saying nothing to you. You don't say nothing to them. You say hi and bye and you keep a pushing. But ain't no way in hell that I'm not going to invite my friend to anything that I'm having just to appease them scary ass hoes. Like, I, I'm on with that, Karen. The carrot, I was with you all season. But when it came to that, I won't with you on that. So the ladies uh, was getting ready for the dominatrix party. Um, Robin shows up looking like an off-duty dyke. And um, Karen shows up the way Karen shows up. I, I mean, I guess her dominatrix thing was wearing all black and having a piece of foxtail fur you know dangling down on the side or whatever the case may be i mean karen i guess so listen karen is over 50 okay karen is just you know she 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 too old for that she too old she too seasoned and she too mature for that so i'm gonna let you have it karen um, so the ladies play a sex game and Karen don't answer none of the questions, but she does let the ladies know one, she has a suck raised dick in two years and she has a pillow fetish. Um, they asked her, did she hump the pillow? She said, no, Karen, you're lying. Karen, you're lying. You know, most girls do that with a towel. You just decide to use your pillow. And so far as it comes to you not giving Ray head, girl, Ray don't care. Ray dick stopped getting hard when <laughs> Ray, <laughs> Ray dick stopped getting hard at, at the first season of this thing. So it doesn't shock or surprise me none at all that Karen isn't giving no fellatio and Uncle Ben's don't care. Moving on. So um i forgot to mention this before candace had the best outfit um so the ladies was having fun at the sex party and robin the the, the sheer joy and delight on robin's face was at when ashley was dancing all up on her proved my point about her being an off-duty dyke from um the Baltimore uh, Projects child. Moving on. So Ashley tells a story about how she and Michael took a girl home. I guess so, Ashley. Girl, we're going to dive into that tomorrow on the after show. So Ashley tells Candace that she's writing a character statement for Monique. Wendy takes up for Candace. Um, Candace says that her and her husband talk cold cash shit about Ashley to her and little Chris. Um... We'll get back down to that in a minute. And then Robin and Giselle throws her up under the bus. And then Karen takes up for Monique. Wendy, shut the fuck up. Like, like just straight up, no chase of Wendy. Shut the fuck up. Like, it, you, you bug the hell out of me because you're doing nothing but proving how weak and minded and how simple that you are in the mind. Miss, I have four degrees. What bothers me about Wendy the most is you're new. Monique didn't do a damn thing to you. Whether Ashley is doing that for Monique or not, you shouldn't feel no ways tied to it because you weren't there when, when the entire situation took place, even before the fight. And I'm talking about last season. You were not there for none of that to witness both sides of the story. You're coming into this. And, the, and let's be clear. The only reason why you're even taking up for Candace is so that you can stay in good graces with Robin and Giselle, the two bird brain hoes that don't have nothing, 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 nothing. If anything, they need to be kissing your ass trying to be really cool with you because you have the husband. You have the lifestyle, quote unquote. You have four degrees. They should be kissing your ass. And I just don't like you, Thick Weave. I don't like you. You, 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 like, I, listen, listen, y'all, as an adult, I just can't get down with that. 
I can't get down with that. And then Robin and, and, and Giselle. Great Dane and Tacky Jezebel Giselle. Doing what Tacky Jezebel and Great Dane do, which is throwing Ashley up under the bus when they set up and talked about, oh, but you told us that it's to get back at Candace. Even if she, like, and that's another thing that pisses me off about them too, because you bitches ain't even friends with uh, Candace like that. Any chance y'all get, y'all throw her up under the bus and talk about her like a damn dog and shade her ass all over um, Al Gore's good internet and on Bravo. Then here come Candace want to sit up here with these white women's tears as if we give a damn. Candace, let me explain something to you. You're the one who decided to take this up with the courts. She had no other choice or no other regrets but to do what she did. So girl, bye. Moving on. So anyway, I'm back, y'all. Um, so Karen says that Monique showed her the police report of both her and Candace's statement. And Candace wrote down that she hit her with the glass in self-defense. Um, and she says she's waiting on her to tell the truth about that. And I have to agree. Candace starts crying again, girl, and starts talking about how she's taking uh, anxiety pills and 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 how she's waking up every day wondering what she's going to do. Candace, listen. I I'm I'm sorry, daughter. The 95 percentile of Americans that watch this show with half a damn brain already sees what it is that you're doing. But this is the real gag. The judge saw what the fuck you was doing, too. And that's exactly why he threw the case out, not only on your end, but on Monique's end, too. Like, Candace, you are doing shit, but making a mockery of the real people who does wake up having anxiety, having PTSD. You're like, y'all not going to force this shit on me. Y'all not. All of you Candace people who wants to sit up and believe that nonsense, that's just fine. Don't bring that bullshit over here on my channel because you're never going to get me to believe that. I refuse to believe that Candace is sitting at home every damn day, sitting in a corner, shaking in a corner, holding a metal baseball bat, rocking back and forth, singing Negro spirituals, waiting, looking at every corner, every door, every window to make sure that Monique isn't coming up in there. Monique hasn't bothered that bitch since the fight. She hasn't talked to her since the fight. She's kept her distance. Candace kept hers. Candace, you're not normalizing this with me. And, and, and y'all are not going to make me back into that. Period. So then Karen stands her ground with Monique. With, with Stands her ground where she stands with both ladies, as she should. And Giselle said that they both were wrong, but Monique took it too far. Um, Giselle, you the one that should have wore her ass whooping. So if I was you, I would tread lightly. And so then they disperse from where they was at. Candace calls little Chris and tells little Chris what happened. Candace, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit. Um, and, and as far as this whole thing about her probably talking junk, I'm more than sure she did. Because last season, they wasn't that close like that with each other. Not last season, maybe the season before. No, last season, she was still pregnant. I believe it was. There was a point in time, either the season before last or last season, when Ashley and um, Monique were not cool. But Candace and Monique was. So it's not so far-fetched to sit up and think, yeah, she probably was talking shit about her. They wasn't cool then. They're cool now. I, and then Ashley's calling Michael and then Michael feel the same way we all do. Ashley is a liar. I mean, not Ashley. Um, Candace is a liar. This, this, that, and this. And then we see on the next episode, here go Thick Weave again, sitting up here talking about shit that she has absolutely nothing to do with, picking a side that benefits her. Like, ah, y'all, uh -uh, I'm done. I'm done because I'm about to really get a headache. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode. Let me know uh, whether y'all are the 95 percentile like me who uh, who agrees that the both of them were dead ass wrong. They're both responsible for what happened. And everybody else just needs to get over it. Y'all have to get over it now because the, the case that came and went. The judge threw it out. 
The judge threw it out. The judge looked at the tape. The judge looked at the statements. The judge looked at everything he had to look at. And he already agreed. Your majesty agreed. Candace was just as responsible for stopping the fight as Monique was. Candace is not a victim. And what happened to her? Candace ate it. And what happened to her? And that's just what I said. And I'm gone. Bye. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business.